Hello, my name is Larry Parman with the law firm of Parman and Easter Day. Welcome back to one of our video interviews. Many of you have watched these before. I must tell you that estate planning, particularly elder law planning and care for seniors, as we all navigate our way through the later years in life, is a very, very important part of our practice. Many of our clients ask us about senior living options where they might go to live if they ever decide to live, leave their home. So today, I'm really delighted to have someone with us from Epworth Village. Laura Garrett comes to us with a doctorate in education. She works for Epworth Village. And so Laura and I are going to talk a little bit and just share a few thoughts about her organization, how it serves the public, and share with you items of information that will be very useful and helpful to you if you ever get to the point where you need to make that decision. So Laura, welcome. Thank you. Good to have you here. Appreciate it. So I'm going to walk through some of the who, what, where, how, why, and when parts of the conversation because I want our viewers to have a thorough understanding of what you do, what your organization does, and so forth. So let's just start with you. Sure. So tell us about your personal journey into this field of work. Okay. I'm an Oklahoma City native. I grew up here. Went to college to concentrate in gerontology. Uh, so I'm actually doing what I always thought I would be doing. That's great. Um, I also am a professor, taught for many years in higher education in the area predominantly of, de of developmental psychology and gerontology, child development. So this is kind of a perfect fit for me. Um, I joined Upworth Villa in about August of last year. Um, and when you say story. Villa, you mean Epworth Villa? Epworth Villa, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and my title is officially Director of Resident Life. So I deal with everything in independent living, as well as all the things that overlap in other areas for transportation, for religious studies, that are all of the, the um, chaplains work for me, as well as any of the activities that kind of overlap into the other areas of, of the retirement community. Good. You're excited about that. I love it. Yes, very much. So Epworth is fairly close to our office. We have a number of clients who are, are at Epworth. It's a fabulous facility. So what would you share with viewers about the history of Epworth, where it started, where it is today, how it's evolved, sure. and so forth? Um, Epworth began in about 1990, opened our doors in 1990. We're a CCRC, which stands for a Continuum of Care Retirement Community, which means we do everything from independent living, where many of our residents are still working full time, all the way to health services, which most people equate to nursing facility. Um, at independent living, we have cottages, we have apartments, we have all kinds of living setups and, and again couples and single people who live there. Um, most of our residents still drive in independent living, although we have drivers to do that. Then the next step is assisted living where individuals need some help with activities of daily living. And there are two areas there, there's the memory care unit and the regular assisted living unit. We have two units for skilled, so if you have a knee replacement, you go to the skilled facility to do mm -hmm. therapy and get back to where you were. And then we have health services, which is the nursing home side of things. Well, so you have a comprehensive service. They can migrate people all the way from moving into the cottage, being completely independent, taking care of themselves all the way up to the final stages. Absolutely. And some people do, do go back and forth. It may be, again, after a knee surgery or a situation where your health has declined, you may do respite care in one of our other levels of care and then move back to independent living again. So tell me a little bit about the residents that you have at Epworth. Do they, it's kind of a two-sided question. Tell me about them and where they can come from. And do you guys market to a specific geographical area or do people come from all over? How does that work? Absolutely. Again, uh, the majority of our residents are from Oklahoma ties of some sort or another. But as we become much more of a commuter community, we have a lot of residents who move from other places. A lot of times that is because their children live here or their grandchildren live here um, in, in the Oklahoma City area. So we, our residents come from all different walks of life. We have a sitting judge. We have quite a few attorneys. We have accountants. We have doctors. Um, most of them are have traveled in the community and it, it across the world, um, so they're very uh, well versed in all kinds of activities, and that's why from the culture Epworth Villa, we're very careful to make sure that we have engaging activities and uh, ways for individuals to continue to be very active in their lives. So that leads to an obvious question, and that is, okay, now we know a little bit about Epworth Village. Is it Villa or Village? Villa. Villa. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. Epworth Villa, and. Um, 
We know a little bit about the organization. We know they started in 1990. We know they have a full array of services all the way from completely independent living all the way up to advanced skilled nursing. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the people. Tell us about the residents who are there. Tell us what you do to help keep their life exciting. Mm -hmm. And what's the magic there? Well, huge right now in, in the aging community is wellness. So we have a full active gym. We have Tai Chi, we have yoga, um, we have line dancing. We have something every once a week Monday nights called Inquiring Minds, which really is in the elder hostel model. Uh, right now they're studying European art. Uh, we've had a lot of different uh, discussions about religion and ethics and all kinds of things in Inquiring Minds. Vespers is a religious experience that we have on Thursdays. It goes across the denominations. Different pastors from across Oklahoma City come and speak. Uh, we go on lots of trips. They just went on the Azalea Festival Tour. Uh, some of them are very short day trips. Some of them are overnights. Uh, we also have a lot of snowbirds who come to our facility because they don't want to care for their home anymore while they're gone. Okay. So they live in the cottages seven months out of the year and travel the rest. And we take care of the lawn. We take care of all the amenities that you might need while you're out of town. So every day when those residents are experiencing their life in your facility, Every day probably gives you living examples of going above and beyond and taking care of people in unique and different ways. So share a couple of examples with us with us of experiences along those lines where you really you really feel like you stepped up and went beyond to help someone. I think the key is that all of us, especially when we're well and doing well, think that it's great to have that home of your own, which is wonderful. But we have an instance not too long ago, a couple he works full time in the construction business and she was a stay at home mom. So they were on the phone talking and, and he could tell that something was wrong and suddenly she kind of began to slur her words. So he hung up immediately, called our front desk and our safety officers were there within minutes uh, because we're right there on campus. And of course it turned out she was having a stroke. And as you know, that's the critical time when we need to get there very quickly. Sure. The ambulances know exactly where to go because our safety officers including them. So she's made a very quick, very full recovery. And you hate to think the worst, but if she had been at home, who knows how long the ambulance would have taken to get there. And of course, we're very familiar with her background, could hand medical history to the ambulance immediately. So that to me is the success story of Epworth Villa. It's not that we uh, invade in people's lives, but it's a backup so that if something were to happen, if you need your knee replaced and you want to go down the hall to, to therapy, all of those things are very convenient. I also think of the times in the bad weather when you and I don't even want to drive, but individuals who are getting older don't want to drive at all. Sure. So they may drive all the time, but in the, the weather we have a pharmacy in-house we have a Mercy Clinic in-house. There are three dining venues, so individuals can get out as often as they want, and they do. But on the other hand, when you're not feeling up to it or the weather is bad, you can stay in our community and get all the services and amenities you need to be right there at Epworth. So we have millions and millions of baby boomers, mm -hmm. like myself, making, maybe like, even like you. Absolutely. Making our way through this life bubble more and more demand for the kind of services and facilities like Epworth Villa. Right. So we've seen a, a number of those facilities built. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear about a lot of them. We work with a, a number of them. So, there, you know, it's getting to be a pretty competitive field, I would say. Right. So how does Epworth set itself apart from its competition? Well, I think the biggest component is that we're a 501c3. We're a non-profit entity, and that's unusual. Most of the facilities you're talking about that are being built right now are corporate facilities. And why that matters to me is that as a person who works at a 501c3, I feel very little pressure other than to make sure that the residents are taken care of, to move them to a higher level of care, or to do the kinds of things that a for-profit has to do. We're a resident-driven facility, and that really means that the residents decide what kind of programming they want, they govern the institution, we have a volunteer board of directors, so it's a very different um, makeup than a, a company that has a corporate feel. And I love that aspect of Epworth Villa. So does the board actually have some management, not day-to-day -day management, but some policy the, uh, setting? Absolutely. The residents are very involved. Is? I okay. was in a resident life committee meeting this morning. That's pretty important. Absolutely. They're all very involved and they set the pace for what we do and how we do it. That's very important. Mm 
So let's think about another dimension too, and that is, um, you know, you have the competition, you have these baby boomers. Um, so when should someone start thinking about this? And so talk about how people should go about the thinking process, because we're going to have a number of clients and other people watching this, and some of them may be saying, you know what, I don't feel like I'm ready yet. But maybe they haven't taken into consideration waiting times mm -hmm. and opportunities to get in at the right place at the right time. Absolutely. So what, what are your thoughts that you would share about those points? The number one comment we get when people move in is, I wish we'd done this sooner. Oh, interesting. Um, it's very often that a family waits until they're in crisis. And it's really the worst time to be making those kinds of decisions. Because number one, you're in crisis, so you can't really think through the process. But the other thing is, is that your options are somewhat more limited. So it may be that assisted living is no longer the, the place for you. And then it is much more difficult, especially if you're talking about skilled and health services. The choices and the opportunities are much more limited when you're at that stage of your development. The other thing I'd say is um, I'm always interested in how people age successfully. What's the magic thing? And the thing that comes up in the research time and time again is social networks. And so it tends, as we get older and lose our peers or that people move, that we have less and less social networking, especially if your children, your adult children, live halfway across the country. Sure. So to me, that's the, the, the number one thing you need to think about. And I always tell um, anybody who's thinking about this that the greatest gift you can give someone, especially your children, is to make these kinds of decisions yourself when you're still able to so that then you and your children can make these kinds of decisions together in the best, best plan possible. So I'm curious about the future. Mm -hmm. So how much time does Epworth, as an organization, think about the future and what are you anticipating five years from now, ten years from now? How, you, how are you incorporating that into your long-term business plan, anticipating needs of future residents? What do you see that's going on there that might be of interest to our viewers? Oh, technology is the number one thing that we look at. Um, most of my residents now, I'd say 40% have a smartphone. A lot of them are on Facebook. They're very aware of how to look at reviews and information on the internet. Some of that's very good and some of it is very bad because in the end they're very often victims of fraud if they're not very careful. So those are things we're definitely looking at. Uh, we definitely are looking at the way that we can help residents be more actively engaged physically. Most of them want it and a very active gym. We have a beautiful indoor pool. Uh, so they're very involved and engaged. We just set up the Wii so that individuals can okay. come and bowl and do all those kinds of things. Pool tables. Um, again, nutrition, another big one. We have, as I said, three resident um, eating facilities. And a lot of them want very healthy choices in the mix of that. So not only do we have fine dining, a medium class dining and a quick cafe, but we also try to make sure that there are healthy choices in all of those activities. So I wouldn't be surprised if five, ten years from now, all of your residents will be able to wear a, a band mm -hmm. or, a, or something. A Fitbit kind of thing. Yeah, a mm -hmm. Fitbit kind of uh, device that will alert you if heart rate, blood pressure, oh, all those medical indicators start to pop up and you'll know as soon as they know, maybe before. Right. Yeah, in fact, some of that is already happening. The pendants that a lot of our residents mm -hmm. choose to wear, mm -hmm. not only do we know they're in trouble, but I can tell you exactly where they are in our location. So if they're walking outside along our pond and they fall or have difficulty, my safety officers know where they are within the facility so we can get to them faster. So what would you say in closing to people who are watching about why Epworth? What would, if you were sitting, if they were sitting next to you at, at a, in a chair or across from a, a table or desk, why Epworth? Well, I think the key to making this decision is to go visit. And when you go visit Epworth, you'll find many, many engaged residents who are very involved in their health and their future. Uh, it's very important, too, that the children of the residents are engaged and involved, too. So that's one of the things I would look for. I think it's also huge that you have lots of choices of activities and things to do, and that we reach those residents at whatever point they are in life, not just when they enter, but when they leave. So our, is that continuum of care okay all the way through the process? And, and at Epworth, we make a huge effort to make sure that they can stay as independent and as engaged as possible as long as possible. So Laura, this has been great information. So. Anything else, any final points you'd like to make about Epworth? 
Well, I think it's interesting to see most of the people that tour out there, children of our residents who are looking. Um, one of the things I'd recommend is that they think, is this a place I would live? If I were looking for myself, would this be the place to go? And I think most of our people would say Epworthville is that place. Uh -huh. The tight social networking, the beautiful facilities, everything taken care of, you can't beat it. Great point. It's a wonderful facility. Thank you. And we have a number of people, uh, clients that are, that are there, and they all speak highly of it, and uh, they, they're having great experiences. So I'd really like to thank you for thank coming you. and joining us. So why don't you share with the viewers how they can get a hold of you, email, telephone, and so forth? Wonderful. Okay. Um, my email is lgarrett, and that's G-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, at epworthvilla.org. I don't know my phone number. <laughs> you have to tell me on your car. <laughs> Same as me. I don't know mine either. I have clue what my All phone right, lowest well, phone number. Everybody, write this down. <laughs> uh, the direct line is 405-749-3529, and is that the? Uh, that's the main number. Yes, it is. Yeah, the main number is 405-752-1200. Extension 1239. So again, Laura Garrett, thank you for being with us. Great to meet you. And thanks for sharing the message of Epworth. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you all for being with us today. We look forward to sharing more information about senior living, senior care, estate planning, elder law planning in the near future. This is Larry Parman, and I will talk to you later.